All right. So welcome everyone to uh, the discussion panel um, about data import on Lexemes that we're doing in the frame of the 30 Lexico days. Um, and with us tonight, we're going to have uh, three editors who are going to tell us a bit more about the uh, imports that they've been doing on Wikidata for Lexemes. Um, we're going to have uh, Yurik, who's been doing some import in Russian, uh, Kirill in Estonian, and Uziel in Hebrew and Latin. Um, the three of them are going to present a little bit more about the process, how they did it, uh, what are maybe the problems that they encountered, and so on. They're going to show us the tools that they used. And then after each presentation, that's going to be 10 minutes, we're going to have a little bit of time for questions that you can ask um, in the chat. Um, and then at the end of the session, after I stop the recording, we're going to have a bit more time for informal discussions, um, if you want. So that was it for the introduction, basically. Um, and now uh, I can ask uh, Yurik to um, tell us a bit more about what you've been doing with the Russian Lixims on Wikidata. Hi, uh, my name is Yuri, otherwise known as Yurik. I've done some work in a number of projects, including Lex Lexems. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, it will work. If it doesn't, please do let me know. All right. So um, a while back, I noticed this wonderful project. And Russian was pretty low on that number. So I decided to boost that number. Well, this is not the real reason why I did it, obviously. But this just shows that I did import quite a few. There's over 100,000 Lexems now been created. So to demonstrate what it looks like, well, Russian is fairly convoluted, complex language, has a lot of different forms of words. So um, this is a noun. And just for a noun, you have six standard variants of how the word changes depending on where it is in the sentence. So uh, all these forms, and this word means peace or world, depending on the context. Um, so here's one of them. Uh, I, uh, I picked this one because it has a nice round number uh, to it. And there's all the forms as well as like uh, pronunciations and other things. As you can see, there's a lot of different forms depending on uh, the grammatical form. What I did was I wrote a, a framework for this import process. It's called Lexicator. And this uh, project, even though it initially it was built for Russian, is striving to be language neutral. You're welcome to read there's a in-depth in uh, in English, uh, description of how it works. Essentially, what it does is it looks at a page in the Wiktionary. And uh, at least Russian Wiktionary has uh, a fairly well-structured um, uh, form. So there is like a, as you can see, there, there is a, um, a template for nouns, and the name of this template already specifies a type of uh, lexical morph morphism of the word, uh, a whole bunch of parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what the project does. Essentially, what uh, this is the actual project in my uh, in in the ID. So the way it works is it breaks the page into um, into tokens. And then using those tokens, it constructs all the needed forms, then loads those forms from uh, from uh, Wikidata uh, and make sure that everything is up to date and is the same between Wiktionary and Wikidata. Um, there's a, a lot of good features of this project. I'm not going to go into all of them, but the more most important ones are the fact that, A, it provides all the cache, automatic caching and uh, uh, parsing uh, of, of the Wiktionary code, as well as it's able to execute Lua code on Wikidata in order to partially execute the templates so it can actually get um, the results. And for example, uh, here, um, this table is created by a template. So what my code is able to do is it's able to execute the code to get this table and then get results from this table 
without uh, w while maintaining all the internal checks, internal capabilities of Lua code and uh, wiki, wiki, uh, wiki templates. And using this system, I was able to create at least all the nouns, all the, uh, the most common nouns in Russian language. I'm nowhere near the uh, done on this project because uh, there's adjectives, there's verbs, and many other uh, word forms. But that's the basis of the project, and I would be very happy if this project takes uh, is adopted for other languages. Uh, just to show the example, like for example, uh, you, you can see that there is. A Russian subdirectory for all the uh, things that are specific to the Russian language, and then there is uh, all the common functionality that is uh, that is uh, common to all the languages. Like for example, there is Russian specification. There's I, I started doing something for Ukrainian, uh, was not able to finish it just yet, but it's possible to do a lot more. And uh, this, I'll stop and let people ask questions. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the presentation. So if people have questions, feel free to raise them um, in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I have one for you. Um, so I think this project was one of the first where some some data was imported uh, from Wiktionary. And I was wondering, because this topic has been a bit difficult because of the question of license and all kind of things, how did you run this discussion with the Russian Wiktionary community and how did it go? Yes, so that was a big concern initially. Uh, it was posted a number of uh, forums in the Russian Wiktionary and um, uh, the, the result was as following. Uh, the lexicator is able to import all the quote unquote, non-copyrightable facts from Wiktionary. In other words, word forms are the same no matter what, they, no matter where you get them from. They are part of the language itself. On the other hand, Lexicator does not import anything like examples of usage of those words, because that is copyrightable and that, uh, unless the specific user of the, uh, who created that specific example is okay with uh, donating it to CC uh, to public domain. Uh, in theory, it's not okay to just copy the example of the word usage. Uh, quite a few people suggested that we probably still should do it, but I mean that I felt that it was slightly out of the outside of the scope of the initial project of importing things. Um, there's a question: uh, if it gets changes from Wiktionary, yes, it's able to get the changes and it's able to update them. Uh, at the same time, the, the changes, it's nearly, unless there is a mistake in how the word was uh, formed, uh, there's really no changes to update because uh, the words don't change their form. I mean, once the form is there, it's there. So there's very little, uh, for, but it does get new words, yes. Uh, also another thing that I've, did not mention, but probably should have, is that if you look in um, on the wiki, on the Wiktionary page, it also added a little template to each word, indicating where where it is in the uh, in the wiki uh, in the Wikidata. So there is a one way connection fr from here. I mean, sorry, there is two way connection from from Wiktionary into the uh, Wikidata, and there is obviously a con. Is there a connection here? Oh, well, there, there is no, unfortunately, there's no way to link from here back into Wiktionary uh, other than to use the word itself. And that brings me to the most important request from the Wikidata uh, tech team. Please, please, please allow us to use this data directly in the uh, in the Wiktionary because there, otherwise there, it creates two communities and unfortunately, People do not, uh, people feel kind of bad about editing in two places or maintaining in, in two places or just having two systems. Is, right. um, uh, yes, the template parser can be used on other wiki projects as well. Uh, you just have to essentially 
uh, configure it for others because other projects use different templates, use different language parse uh, constructs, use different conventions. But I mean, the parser is very generic. It actually uses a well-known Python parser internally for wiki markup. The only th and big thing that I added was ability to execute Lua and uh, wiki templates remotely via the API. So it's able to resolve the templates into, the, into results and then use the results for import. Thank you, Nikki. I'll take a look at the, at the script. All right, thanks a lot. Do we have any more questions for, for Yuri? If any questions come to you later, no worries, because at the end of the session, we're also going to have some extra time to just have some uh, discussions. But in the meantime, um, I suggest that we move on to uh, Kirill, who go who's going to talk to us um, about Estonian. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, because we had some issues with my sounds. So, um, you know, not to get lost, I, I kind of, um, oh, sorry, I had to share the screen first. <laughs> uh, so let me do that. Select window, screen, entire screen. Okay, so now it should be sharing. And yes, perfect. Yeah, so quick, uh, quick uh, overview of what why 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 did I ever start doing this so I've I came to live in Estonia like uh, three years ago and uh, of course I was uh, willing to learn the language and uh, started doing that quite quite soon and uh, realized that actually Estonian is quite a tricky uh, language uh, to learn uh, if you want to read some book or if you want to read an article or something like that uh, then uh, there are quite many situations where the dictionary or vocabulary, I mean, the book uh, won't help you much because uh, Estonian forms are quite different compared to, to the nominal form in which it's presented in the, uh, in the dictionary. Uh, so I, I was kind of concerned with that and started looking around and, and, uh, trying to find some solutions for that and um, and so this this there was a long road to Lexem which I, I've, uh, I've shared a, as a blog post and I will also share a link in this presentation as well so uh, if uh, if you're curious uh, how to how to go about it um, if you like you you have some language that you want to learn on it's a native language that you want to share with the world uh, you you might, might want to to have its lexems um, upload to the wiki data because obviously it's it's a very very tedious task to do manually. Uh, so um, first challenge you will have is 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 what source uh, you are going to to choose. So Yuri, for example, have has chosen this uh, dictionary source, which is interesting because I basically didn't ever occur to me that <laughs> I, I knew that dictionary exists but i uh, um, kind of uh, i only very very occasionally had to use it so i uh, to be honest i still have no idea how how well is presented estonian language on dictionary um so i didn't consider that possibility but i i found an online tool uh from uh, eki uh, which is estonian uh, language institute um that uh, you could actually download and uh, you could uh, put any form into it and it would uh, show you potential candidates for nominal form uh, or uh, you could uh, put a nominal form and it would generate all the forms for you so like it's, it has two modes of, of uh, functioning analysis and synthesis 
and um, I, I was almost like all the way through with this approach. So I had to 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 generate all those forms, but uh, then it occurred to me that some uh, forms have actually been generated uh, in a wrong way. And I was very disappointed by that. And I reached out to to a person in the Estonian Language Institute who actually uh, suggested me to use a different uh, uh, different tool that they have developed, uh, which didn't exist, uh, by the way, when I started working on this. And it's called Synavape, uh, which means uh, a word net in Estonian, essentially. And and here you can uh, you you can um, basically find all the way. Uh, so, for example, Owen is is a, is a verb um, in a present first person form, Lugema. Right, so by the look of it, if you don't know the word, if you don't know Estonian paradigm well enough, you would never guess. Or at least I wasn't able to guess that this is uh, that one. So uh, Cinevape actually gives you this capability, which I was, which I had in mind before I even started thinking about Wikidata. I was just looking for something that where I could put a form that I came against in in some source and in a book and an article. And uh, and find the the, the original uh, word for that form. Yes. So um, this uh, tool is backed by an API, uh, which is a JSON-based API, which uh, lets you basically retrieve all those forms, um, both lexemes and forms, and many many other things as well, like uh, pronunciation examples of usage and stuff like that. And um, I applied for 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 an access to this API. I, I specifically said that the reason I'm applying is I want to populate the wiki data, lexemes, and I also discussed this with, with this uh, person uh, via email. Uh, so I, I got this access approved, and then then I had to to. Actually, I had the ability to use that tool. Um, once uh, you've settled with uh, your source, so basically, the dilemma is you you might want to use generators because it's uh, probably easier sometimes, or when the curated source is not available, it might be the only option. But uh, generators have actually a lot of uh, Gotchas, so you 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 have to keep an eye on, and especially as I'm not native speaker, I was very not comfortable with this idea that I might be polluting uh, global Wikidata with some stuff that's not actually uh, valid. So um, I had abandoned this project with generators and only could use this uh, created source from the API, and. Um, so yes, this is a brief definition of what I, I was using. This uh, the the API is also open source. You can you can see it on the GitHub if you're interested too. So if you if you want to do it, uh, I would suggest the following approach: that you you first of all you kind of collect all this uh, database locally because uh, it's a very very long term operation. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes uh, days and weeks, maybe, to complete, and uh, you don't want to to like uh, lose your progress in the middle of it, right? Uh, so you want to have uh, some uh, base of your forms of your lexems uh, built locally that you kind of um, own it and uh, your it, it stays there safely. And then you build a Wikidata compatible data model around that source so that uh, you can then just simply upload it in a batch uh, and not like worry about uh, consistency and so on. Of course, you have to normalize it so you don't uh, pull. Uh, sometimes the source gives you uh, same forms over and over again because they are just um, made this way. 
and uh, so you you want to keep an eye on it and not uh, oh. not pollute the database with uh, with the forms that are already present or with lexems that are already present and then uh, uh, as to the question of tooling um, as a Java developer, I had to use this Wikidata toolkit, which is quite a solid um, software uh, built by, I believe, uh, somebody at Wikidata or at, at Wikimedia Foundation, uh, or at least uh, maintained uh, by these uh, people, probably. But there is a big thing uh, which is still unresolved, I believe. Uh, there was this issue. Like sim editing as such is not supported by Wikidata Toolkit. So that's something you, you, you want to know about if you want to use this approach. So I actually had to uh, look around and uh, the code from Yuri was, uh, Yuri, thank you once again uh, for that. Uh, was a day saving thing for me <laughs> to look at your code and just realize what, what capabilities does uh, Wikidata API has and uh, how could I use it. And then, um, uh, yes, you want to create a bot account. So I'm I'm saying this. I don't know what's the audience is. Probably everyone already knows, but uh, that was a new thing to me. And I had to apply for Wikidata uh, account. And I know that Arthur Smith has joined, who has approved my bot. So thank you, Arthur, very much once again. And um, so with bot account, uh, you have. Uh, basically very very um, good developer experience so you just uh, let your program run and if uh, there is um, congestion or throttling happening on the wikidata side server side uh, then the wikidata toolkit will take care of it uh, by itself so that's that's about it oh my icons have have missed um Yes, there is a link to blog post where it's, uh, it's written a little bit more details. Um, and if uh, also just just one uh, final slide, if you allow me. So uh, Yuri mentioned that Estonian is up to up to chase uh, with the Russian language in the, in the Lexim count. But if you look at the form count, then we see that Estonian is actually a solid number one currently and uh, <laughs> it's it's of course not my achievement it's just due to the nature of, of Estonian language uh, some verbs can have as as much as 70 um, forms and then some nouns uh, also could have easily 50 uh, different forms and that's that's just what the language is but with I've heard that this finishes it's it's even more like impressive uh, thanks for your time, and now I will stop sharing and will be glad Thank to have you. questions. Thanks yeah, a lot thanks. for sharing. Thanks um, for me. So same as before, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, and I have one uh, for you to start. I was wondering what motivated you at first to do this important to Wikidata, mm. and I was also wondering if you had ideas of like ways how the data could be reused and maybe what could be the application of this data now that we have plenty of words in Estonian and Wikidata? Um, actually, this is a very good question about application. Uh, there is an uh, audio tool uh, that will let you, so if I just, uh, if I just uh, Google some random Estonian news, oh. Too bad it's in English. In case you wanted to share your screen, you're not sharing for now. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry for that. I wanted to share my screen. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Sorry and thank you. So uh, let's let's say we have uh, some an article in in Estonian, and we we want to have a quick uh, quick understanding of what what it's all about. This will suffice. Uh, we can go to Audio Tool Forge, which which is an excellent tool built uh, by. Sorry, I don't remember the name. Um, Estonian submit. And here we go. So basically, we we see that actually uh, there is a, a tiny fraction of the whole text, 
has not been parsed because it's mostly it's a personal name or it's at Leon Africa, it's South Africa. Uh, so um, I think the uh, potential for this uh, thing is actually uh, limitless almost. So you you can uh, you can build all kinds of um, open source tools that will uh, I hope people will leverage this database eventually. Of course, currently maybe not so much people know about it, uh, but uh, once we have a solid um, Wikidata presence for many languages, I believe that the the demand will will also appear itself, and then we will have more and more tools like this that will let you do um, all kinds of uh, useful stuff, S facilitate language learning, uh, maybe even facilitate translation, uh, you know, like open source uh, translation tools would be a game changer, I believe. You don't have to pay to the big companies and like Amazon or Google for, for that stuff, but you would be able to, at least certain cases, uh, I'm not, of course, uh, implying that we could have like a complete uh, errorless uh, translation from language to language, but at least some, some text parsing, some text extraction is certainly uh, more feasible now uh, compared to what it was uh, without this uh, Lexeme database. So I, it's not only about Estonian, of course, it's, it's, it's related to every language. But it, it was just maybe more relevant with Estonian because in English, uh, most words occur in like in one or two forms. Uh, so it's it's quite easy to write a parser and, and find a word in the dictionary. Whereas in Estonian, it's, it's very different actually. So as I said, every every word can have as much as 70 or 50 representations in the text in the corpus. So um, yeah, that, that's a huge burden that we have mostly taken off the the shoulders of people who would want to do this kind of stuff. All right, thanks a lot. Um, I saw that more people had question. I would kindly ask you to type them uh, in the chat and then uh, Kirill can answer. Or you can reach out on Twitter and we can discuss. I'm 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 here for you. My expertise is tiny, but I will do what what I can. Hello. Yeah, let's uh, let's see. If there are no further questions, then we can move uh, to the next part of the presentation. And of course, there will still be time for uh, questions later. Um, so here we go uh, with um, Uziel, who can talk uh, about us uh, to us about the import in Hebrew and Latin. Actually, uh, I have a bit of a problem with my Mac. It, it asks to reopen Chrome in order to share the screen. Okay, so I, I'll be in a bit. Sure. Okay, you hear me? I can hear you and I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, what I did, uh, I did uh, two projects. Uh, I did the uh, import of Hebrew and I did uh, import of uh, Latin and we can see uh, here is a, a tiny screenshot. Um, as people said before, uh, in, in languages other than uh, English, there are many uh, forms. Uh, so in Hebrew, we have uh, we can get to one hundred forms. 
uh, per uh, lixim, uh, as we can see here. Uh, this is uh, for verbs. Uh, nouns have very uh, a lot less, uh, about uh, 30 uh, forms. And we have uh, Latin. Uh, we have we can reach uh, over 100 uh, forms. Um, we have singular, active, uh, third person, perfect, indicative, etc. Uh, so it all perfect and many more uh, parameters that affect the uh, form. Uh, okay. Um, I, now I, I will say some uh, words about what brought me uh, to this project. Uh, okay, uh, about the, the count, uh, we talk about uh, uh, about uh, 23,000 words, uh, lexemes in uh, Latin and uh, 28,000 uh, in Hebrew and um, they, with all the forms, it about, it, it's about uh, 1.2 million uh, forms in Latin and uh, for 400 forms in uh, Hebrew. Okay, uh, where, where did it all start? Um, two years ago, um, I decided to work on uh, personal programming projects in order to acquire programming skills. Uh, before that, I, I was a software tester. Uh, my first project was a correct typos in one click, which allows users of Wikipedia to fix suspect typos that are similar to real words. For that project, I needed a list of real words. Um, and one of the resources I found was HSpell, which is a Linux tool that aims to be open software of Hebrew spell checker. I read about the tool and I learned that it also has morphological analyzer. Uh, one day, I saw on Facebook a post from one of my fellow Hebrew Wikipedians about the new namespace of Wikidata, the Lexim namespace. I saw the promise here and decided to try and work on, on it programmatically. I actually started by copying words from Wiktionary, and with an auto-clicker tool, I made it save a few hundred words through the Create Lexim link on the side uh, on the user interface. Um, uh, there, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you for two seconds. On screen right now, we only see that we see the same slide. Yes, I, I know, I know. On. Okay, no, okay, we're uh, well, good. I, I will, I uh, will get to the next slides uh, in a bit. Uh, okay, so um, a bit about my uh, my. Uh, previous project that uh, brought me to this project. So um, as a beginner developer, I uh, thought about projects that I can uh, do uh, by myself, uh, that uh, are be, uh, enough uh, easy and uh, small. So I thought about uh, typos. Um, we all know the issue. We all meet uh, typos. Uh, almost every day. And uh, in, Wiki, in, in Wikipedia, we, we don't like typos. So uh, I thought, uh, what, the, what are the solutions to this problem? And we all know the common solution to the problem. Uh, this, this is a common solution, red wavy line under the suspect word. And this solution is uh, developed by Google, Microsoft, Apple, and so on. Uh, so I started editing Google um, article in Wikipedia, and I found out even the name of the founder of Google is marked by, uh, in red. So um, the, the first issue is a false positive, and the second issue is that I only could uh, 
check one sentence at a time and see the wavy lines. So I wanted to uh, make a spell checker for a big text. Uh, this is not the kind of uh, big text that I wanted to spell check, but uh, this is a good example of how uh, typos are created. Uh, this is a plane of Cathay Pacific. Uh, the photo is from their Twitter. And the, um, the issue, the typo here is based on the real world and it just, they just omitted one uh, letter. So many of the typos uh, in the world are based on uh, common words that are miswritten and need a correction. Okay, so um, I created a, a script that takes all the uh, correct words and um, make all the possible variations and then offers to make the variation um, back to the original form, uh, like we see in the uh, example here. Uh, this uh, project is called Correct uh, Typos in, in, in One Click. Uh, and currently in uh, Hebrew Wikipedia, we corrected over 50,000 typos and over uh, 80,000 typos were fixed in English Wikipedia. So um, I saw the, as I said before, I saw the tool uh, that is called HSPEL, uh, which is a morphological analyzer. Uh, so in order to get all the um, morphological uh, analysis of all the possible words, I had to search for a, a list of all the words uh, HSPEL can analyze. So uh, a quick uh, Google uh, gave me the dictionary uh, of uh, based on uh, this project, HSPEL. And uh, it looks like this. It has a long uh, list of uh, words. So uh, I just had to... Uh, run the list um, in the tool uh, in Linux or Mac uh, uh, terminal. And uh, then I got uh, something like this. Um, this is our output of the tool. It um, says about each word if it's a legit word. And it uh, in the parentheses is says uh, the parameters of the uh, the word like noun and the uh, person like one uh, means a uh, first person and now uh, in order to uh, make it uh, like uh, to make it in python and make a uh, wikidata api understand it i had to make uh, many uh, search and replace. So uh, uh, in this example, I replaced uh, one and two uh, with the relevant uh, Wikidata item. Uh, here's uh, first person, second person, etc., and so on. I went over all the parameters and replaced all of them. Um, in the end, I got uh, two some uh, JSON of the of the world um, of the lexeme. The whole lexeme uh, became uh, with all the replacement became JSON uh, that uh, Wikidata API can understand. And um, I based on the the tool uh, Lex Data on Python and I used it uh, to upload all the uh, lexeme, all the JSONs that I created. Uh, that's about the import of Hebrew. Um, the story with Latin is uh, 
is very similar because um, I uh, saw on one of my fellow Hebrew Wikipedians, um, I saw that he worked on uh, some Latin project in GitHub. So I explored it and I found out uh, it's uh, Colonel William Whitaker's uh, words. Uh, he was uh, one of the creators of other programming language in DARPA. And after his retirement, he created the Latin English uh, to, uh, software, Whitaker's words. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the translation part I couldn't uh, copy because it's uh, copyrightable, but the morphological analy analysis I could, and uh, I got it from some archive uh, that uh, has the Linux tool. It, it is only about three megabytes, all the this uh, tool and um, it analyzes um, all the words in uh, Latin. So here again, I had to look for the list of all the words uh, in Latin and run the file through the analyzer. Uh, so I got the list of words from uh, the same uh, website and this list is four megabytes, and I ran it for, uh, in the in the tool in the command line and got a similar um, output that I had to uh, do a lot of search and replace until I got um, JSONs of all the words, uh, and then I uploaded. Um, um, about you, uh, you previously asked about uh, applications. So um, I I started from the project uh, of correcting typos, and I actually used the data I uploaded to uh, in Hebrew in order to find typos that are uh, based on a wrong gen wrong gender of a verb. Uh, each each uh, verb and each uh, a number of uh, like if if I say uh, two people or two women I, I say it differently in Hebrew uh, because uh, women are female in in the language uh, so they have a, another number uh, so I used the, the tool in order to locate uh, um, typos in Hebrew Wikipedia. And uh, that's about it. All right, thanks a lot. So um, as usual, uh, questions are very welcome in the chat. We still have a few minutes for that. Um, in the meantime, my question for you is, so you've been importing this huge amount of um, of content in Wikidata, um, are you kind of following up what's happening with these like themes? What are the edits that are made? Did you find a way to watch um, what's what's happening? And if so, with which tools? Uh, 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 since the uh, tools I used, the, the sources I used are old and are not changing. Uh, so after the upload, I I couldn't get more uh, data from the tools, the sources I used, and I uh, sort of uh, left it as is. And I I tried to add some uh, content to Hebrew, um, like uh, I used some tools that allows um, adding a link to a Wikidata item. Uh, it's kind of uh, I, it's it's kind of a game uh, for it was kind of a game for me uh, at the time. So it looks for the word in the items uh, uh, namespace and offers to link uh, the words 
to the world to the item. Uh, uh, but uh, that's about it. And um, people uh, have asked me about words uh, in Latin, and I said, I have no idea in Latin. I, I only imported it. I, I don't know Latin. Uh, have you had a chance to sync with other Wikidata folks for Hebrew and Latin lexeme best practice, practices? Um, we had a long discussion on discuss, discuss about how to create Russian lexemes. And it is still not perfectly clear in some aspects. Um, I, 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 some people ask me about the lexemes that I used and uh, in Hebrew and, and they told me I, I, used, I used the wrong lexeme for some uh, words. Like um, someone uh, uh, from Jerusalem is called Yerushalmi, and the word, the basic, uh, uh, the lexim I, I uploaded is called Jerusalem, like uh, Yerushalayim. It, it is not the ad, uh, adjective, but the noun. And uh, some people said uh, I did it wrong. Um, my excuse was that this is the way Eichpel did it. So, and in Latin, the same thing. People said to me, this is wrong. So I, I told them, this is how uh, Whitaker created the, the lexemes on his uh, project. So I, I'm not the, the one to take the decisions. All right. Thanks uh, for your answer. Um, I think we're gonna um, conclude this uh, meeting now. I am actually gonna thank you all uh, first time for um, explaining uh, a little bit your process. And starting now, I'm gonna stop the recording of the video so we can continue with a bit more um, informal discussions if you have any remaining question for uh, Yuri, Kirill, or uh, Uziel.